1444. The Ottoman Turks seem poised to capture the Byzantine capital of Constantinople. Pope Eugenius IV calls for a crusade to rescue Byzantium. Poland, Hungary, and Wallachia respond and set out with a coalition force to meet the Turks. But the Ottomans, with a far larger army, are determined to crush this crusade. Although outnumbered, the Christians are led by the highly capable John Hunyadi of Transylvania. The fate of this expedition will be decided by a great battle at Varna. Fourteen thirty nine saw a tremendous development in the history of Christianity and end to the Great Schism. That year, at the Council of Florence, the Western and Eastern churches, after centuries apart, were united once more. However, the Eastern Byzantine Empire was increasingly desperate. By fourteen forty, Turkish power was on the rise and loomed ominous to the kingdoms of Christendom. Pope Eugenius IV labored tirelessly to bolster this new unity between East and West by bringing military assistance to the beleaguered Byzantine state. In January of 1443, the Pope proclaimed a crusade, his object, the rescue of Constantinople, which seemed destined to fall to the enormous armies of the Ottomans. The Pope appointed a papal legate to head the operation. Cardinal Julian Cesarini, a veteran of the anti-Hussite crusade of 1431. Eugenius also tried to convince the Venetians to provide a western naval blockade of the Dardanelles. Much of Europe ignored the Pope's call to crusade. The Hundred Years' War was occupying France and England, and Germany had its own internal concerns. It was the countries of Eastern Europe that faced the most immediate threat from the Ottomans. It's no surprise that Hungary and Poland, with aid from Wallachia and Serbia, were the countries to heed the Pope's call. In recent times, Hungary had elected to join itself to the crown of Poland. Vladislaus III was king of Poland and Hungary, and emerged as the monarch at the head of the new crusade. Supporting him was a Hungarian national hero, John Hunyadi, a bold warrior who would be a scourge to the Ottomans for some 20 years. Hunyadi, a man of somewhat mysterious origins, possibly Romanian, governed a large portion of Transylvania on behalf of King Vladislaus, who valued him enormously. Eventually, Hunyadi would govern the whole of Hungary. To the Hungarians and the Serbs, Hunyadi was cherished as the valiant silver-armored commander who offered hope against the encroaching Turkish menace. In defending the southern Hungarian frontier, he'd won numerous victories and inflicted huge casualties on the Ottomans. His goal was nothing short of the expulsion of the Sultan's power from Europe. Vladislaus and Hunyadi assembled a crusader army, composed mostly of Poles and Hungarians, receiving some help from the Wallachians as well as the Serbs under George Brunkovic. In total, the coalition numbered somewhere around 20,000, a considerable force. The crusade began well enough, despite the Venetians holding aloof and failing to provide a fleet to block the straits. In 1443, Hunyadi and Vladislaus led their army across the Danube and through Bulgaria. They conquered Nish, restored Brankovic to his Serbian domains, and captured Sofia. In a bold move, they marched through wintry weather across the snowy Balkan mountain range to the Thracian plain. The Turks used fallen rocks to block the advance of the Christians through the passes, and flooding and ice created appalling conditions. But the Crusaders pressed on, and their resolve was remarkable. On Christmas Day, they won a victory, but the elements were taking their toll. And so, Hunyadi ordered a withdrawal to Buda. Here, the exhausted troops rested, singing hymns and brandishing captured Ottoman banners. The Hungarian people welcomed them as heroes and joined them in the cathedral to give thanks to God. After these initial successes, the Ottoman Sultan Murad was eager to neutralize the crusade. Despite the Pope's concern for Constantinople, the Eastern Europeans were eager to secure their frontier, and they were willing to listen to the Sultan's proposals. Murad offered a 10-year truce, freeing Serbia and Wallachia from Ottoman dominion, 
while the Hungarians were to refrain from crossing the Danube and to give up claims to Bulgaria. Ultimately, such terms were attractive. The Hungarians and Serbs were doubtful about the viability of Cardinal Julian's plan to relieve Constantinople. The locals were especially skeptical, as by the 1440s, Thrace had become thoroughly Turkified. Many questioned whether there was any Byzantine Empire left to restore. Ultimately, both sides agreed to the truce, with King Vladislaus swearing on the Gospels and Murad swearing on the Quran. However, Hunyadi's campaign had aroused much enthusiasm, and there were calls to reject the treaty as a betrayal to the cause of Christendom. The Byzantine Emperor wrote desperately to King Vladislaus, calling on, quote, the shield of Christendom to stand firm. Cardinal Julian argued that the treaty was invalid. Vladislaus was convinced, announcing his intention to proceed with the crusade to, quote, hurl back the infidel sect. The Cardinal absolved Vladislaus of the truce, calling it, quote, a rash and sacrilegious oath to the enemies of the Christ. The alliance was restored, though without the Serbian contingent, as Brankovic was happy with the treaty. The negotiations had delayed the campaign for that year, giving the Ottomans more time to prepare. Now, the Christian coalition advanced into Bulgaria, taking advantage of the fact that Sultan Murad was away in Asia. At last, the Pope's plan for a naval blockade was put into motion. 24 Venetian galleys arrived in the Dardanelles in July 1444. The intent here was to prevent the Sultan from crossing into the west by controlling the Hellespont. However, the Venetians totally neglected to act. They remained immobile on station and failed to prevent Murad from crossing the Bosporus north of Constantinople in October 1444. The Sultan was leading a massive army, numbering at least 30,000. The Venetians also failed to harry the Black Sea coast, and they never joined up with the Christian land army as it advanced from the Danube to the Bulgarian port of Varna. In essence, the crusade was entirely without naval support. Historian Christopher Tyreman writes, The fleet's Venetian captain declined to risk his ships, provoke the Turks, or assist the Hungarians, perhaps fearful of the competitive dangers of committing Venice too actively in the interests of other land powers. It was also rumored that some of Murad's troops were ferried on Genoese vessels, a treachery considered far worse than the Venetian inactivity. On November 10, the Ottoman and Hungarian Polish armies met on the field at Varna. A fierce battle ensued. According to historian Lord Kinros, the Christians were outnumbered by three to one, but the Ottomans weren't able to overcome their enemy quickly. The fighting lasted all day. Initially, the Crusader right wing charged rashly, and the Ottomans managed to surround and destroy it. But Hunyadi maintained a strong defensive line and succeeded in smashing the Ottoman right wing and killing its commander. By now, casualties were enormous on both sides. Hunyadi urged King Vladislaus to hold his cavalry in reserve, while he himself led an attack on the Ottoman left wing. This moment almost proved decisive, as Hunyadi's charge succeeded and the Ottoman left broke in retreat. Vladislaus now rejected Hunyadi's advice and led a rash attack on the Ottoman center in an attempt to capture the Sultan. The elite Janissaries repelled this attack, and Vladislaus's contingent was shattered, with the king himself being slain and beheaded. The Ottomans now moved to encircle the depleted Christian forces. Hunyadi realized he could do nothing else but save his remaining troops and withdrew with the remnants of the Hungarian army. The field and the victory was left to the Ottomans. However, the Ottoman army had been so badly depleted and damaged that it initially could not pursue the enemy. When Sultan Murad gazed out upon the destruction, he's reported to have called out, May Allah never grant me such a victory again. Hunyadi's efforts on the field had been commendable, but he could not control many of the coalition contingents, many of which suffered from poor leadership and discipline. Even when Hunyadi nearly salvaged a win, Vladislaus' suicidal charge sealed the defeat. Everywhere Hunyadi operated, things went well for the Christians, but ultimately he could not be in all places at once. 
Meanwhile, Murad exercised effective control. His battle plan was typical for the Ottomans, spread disorder with skirmishing units, and then smash the enemy wings while holding firm the Ottoman center. The Crusade of Varna was a total defeat. The verdict of 1444 confirmed Ottoman control as far as the Danube and laid bare the problems of cooperation among the Christian powers. Venice's total failure to act, along with the horrible casualties of Varna, forced the Hungarians and Poles to come to terms with the Ottomans, and Constantinople now faced an even more perilous situation.